friends. I'm very excited. I'm gonna get some water because I'm gonna be doing a lot of talking. Got my chlorophyll water. And while I'm waiting for people to join, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and add this in a couple different groups. And hi, let me know you're here, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. It might be rather late for some of you, depending on where you are, where you're watching from. Hi, Courtney. <clears throat> okay. Sharing. And maybe I'll share on my local page. Share from there. And one more spot. Let me know if you can hear me okay. And we'll get started in just a minute. Okay. Hello! Hello from Brazil! Whoa! Hi, Giselle. Thanks for joining us. You can hear me. Okay, thanks, Allison. I'm gonna share one more spot. I'm gonna share in the Money Lab for those of you who are already in there. I think we've got 10 women in there now. I want 20 more, 30 more, uh, you know, why not 40 more? Why stop there? <laughs> uh, let me share in the money lab real quick and then we shall get started. For those of you who are here on time, I'm actually on time, which is pretty outstanding. Let's see, share in a group, the money lab. All right. Okay, cool. All right, so if you did not see the description for this event, Money Manifesting, I invited you to get comfortable. I invited you to get out your favorite notebook, grab your favorite pen, get a glass of wine, get a cup of tea, get some water, settle in, strap in, because we're gonna be here for a little bit. Um, what I'm sharing with you ladies here today is gold. It's like just liquid gold. Let it just wash over you. By all rights, I should be um, really charging for this. But here's, here's why I'm not charging for this yet. Yet. I am charging for this in more depth. We go into much more depth with this in the Money Lab. And I'm going to talk about this in a minute. I am on a mission to normalize wealth and abundance for women. I want to take any of the weird bullshit and stigma and shenanigans around women who don't feel like they don't deserve money, they don't value their worth, all that stuff, all of our BS excuses about why we can't make money, playing the victim, playing the martyr, all that stuff, it needs to go away, that time is over, we are done, we are really being invited in myriad of ways, in a myriad of ways to step up, to step past this stuff, to step up past limitation. One way we put our money where our mouth is, is by start attracting, calling in, bringing in more money. This is especially true for female spiritual entrepreneurs. So I'm on a mission to normalize wealth and abundance, not only for women, but also female spiritual entrepreneurs, because I am one, if you haven't guessed that. And those of you who don't know me, my name is Catherine Massell. I am a intuitive, master intuitive energy healer. I am an ascending earth creatrix, a spiritual growth catalyst, a multi-dimensional consciousness bridge. I am many, many things. But one of the things that I'm really, really good at doing is helping you break down this whole mishigas, <laughs> the, the whole structuring or the or the paradigms around the power structures of 
way we've looked at money in a pre-existing paradigm, okay? You are one too, Giselle says. Awesome. Hi, Lamorla, welcome. It's my favorite topic too right now, Courtney, because I've had some incredible sessions. I do these sessions with one-on-one -on -one clients called Rewrite Your Money Story. And these are 90-minute intensive sessions where you get exercises that help you to really hone what we do in 90 minutes and take that and work with it going forward and keep up leveling in your life. And so these are ideal for women who are in a business, they're making money in their business, they're spiritually based business, but they just they hit the wall, they hit a threshold. And so I, in these sessions, have been realizing that I know more about this stuff than I thought I did. And I wasn't giving myself enough credit for it. And also because I had figured out a great many things on my own journey of uh, being a spiritual business owner and hitting those money thresholds, hitting those money walls, and realizing how much that was hurting me where I live. It was taking away from my sense of worth and, and confusing me in terms of I was thinking if I wasn't making money, that was saying something about me. No, it was saying everything about the value of my content. I had to fix that. I had to tweak that. I had to look at all of the stories, the money memories, the limiting beliefs. I had to sift through all of my feelings around money, uh, which were pretty terrible. I had to look at my behaviors around money, my patterns and programs of spending money or calling it in or trying to get rid of it right away or having it go through my fingers like sand. I had to look at all of these things and it took me years to pick this all apart to deconstruct the larger money story that I was holding and all the mini stories that were encapsulated in that larger story. And what I found out was some really interesting new tools, some manifesting tools that I love, and I'm gonna talk about a little bit here today. Hi, Kelleen. And I also found out this very, very powerful tool and a way of moving into this kind of singular consciousness around money instead of how we usually think about money is very dual in nature. Meaning either I have money or I don't have money. And making some simple mindset shifts and some energy tweaks around I don't have money yet. I am becoming more wealthy. So kind of bridging this gap between I am without and bridging the gap going, I am with. <laughs> so kind of introducing this singular consciousness around money, I'll talk about that a little bit more. But this duality that we constantly carry with money largely comes from the way we judge our situation, meaning I have money or I don't have money, I am poor or I am not poor, I'm worthy or I'm not worthy, so I'm not calling in money. We tend to put everything in this framework of duality. And when we're doing that, it is always this common denominator of judgment. And judgment is an extremely toxic emotion. If you are trying to call in something that feels good, like money. So if you're constantly in this place where you're judging yourself, judging your situation, judging money, how do you expect to be in the high energetic and in alignment with something that feels so good, meaning all the great things that that money you're asking for is gonna provide for you, how do you think these two things meet? They don't. It took me a really long time to unravel this and get rid of the judgment, get rid of the layers of resistance that I was holding on to. So let me get some more light in here. There is going to be a lot of content in here. I mean, a lot. So write things down. You'll want to go back to this and listen to it again because I'm gonna be throwing a lot of content at you. Um, I'm gonna be, excuse me, probably speaking for a good hour and a half. So like I said, strap in, hi Christine, and take notes. Because some things are really gonna jump out at you. Some things are gonna, some things that I'm going to say to you are gonna hit you right in the feels and you're gonna be like, oof. Like a gut punch, maybe but hopefully a good feeling, like an epiphany or an awakening. What I call like <laughs> mini like Kundalini awakening where you feel this kind of rising up of knowledge within you and it just kind of poof, expands. 
This happens when we start looking at our money stuff. And with the, the private sessions I do with women with the Rewrite Your Money story, this is what happens a lot. Because when we do the one-on-one -on -one work, and I can kind of see between the lines because I am a master intuitive energy healer. So I hear what you say and I, I see your, your lips moving and I hear you talking, but I hear the energetic between your words. And so I'm actually really good at helping you kind of uncover maybe a bigger belief or what I call a bottom belief, a key belief that you maybe didn't get to the core of. You're still working on these fragmentary beliefs up there and they're still powerful. They're still causing a powerful rift in your world, meaning not letting you allow money to come in. But if we don't hit the bottom belief, you can't really sever the program that you're running of limitation, if that makes sense. So this is to give you a taste really of what we're going to be doing in the money lab, which has already begun. I've already opened it up, but we don't officially start doing the live support calls. There's going to be four of them at the outset. Um, it was just going to be a four week course, but some of the women who've been reaching out to me in the group really want long-term support with this. So I decided to turn the money lab into a membership group. And so with your investment of 197, and if you're already in the, in the abundance lab with me, it's only 97 for you. But through the end of 2018, we're going to do lots of support, extra support calls. Um, I'm going to be putting a lot of tips and information, uh, money mindset exercises in there, journaling prompts for you, um, things to kind of make you think about what you're doing in terms of every time you reach a newer income threshold, you might think that you peeled away layers of energetic resistance before, and you have. But every time you ask for a new income threshold to open up for you, we meet with a new layer of resistance. Otherwise, it would just be easy. Otherwise, we would just access it. But here's the thing about money and calling in money. If you've been asking for a certain amount of money for a really long time, and it just ain't coming in, there is resistance. Otherwise, you would have it. Otherwise, it would be there. So I like to, I'm a natural detective. I love to look at the stuff that's there, the stuff that maybe we don't want to look at, the stuff that's under the rock that you don't want to pick up and see all the worms and the dirt and the filth. But that's where the gold is. Because until we get rid of that stuff, until we blast that stuff away, remove that resistance, you will be in this constant state of trying to suffer and struggle and scratch your head like, what am I doing wrong? What is wrong with me? Why am I not worthy? Why does God hate me? And all this other stuff wrapped up in judgment, which we can alleviate that entirely. If you are willing to have some radical self-acceptance, that there is something in the way. Radical self-acceptance that there is nothing wrong with you. You are not broken. You don't need to be fixed but you are holding on to some energetic within you, some belief, some feeling, some trapped emotion, some story that you keep running on a loop cycle, um, some program you keep running on a loop cycle that you are holding on to that is directly contributing to that, bit, that barrier being there. Meaning, here's you, here's what you want, and then here's this big friggin' thing. So that's what the Money Lab is going to be about. There's women in there already. There's, I think, 10 women in there already. They are the early birds. So guess what the early bird gets? Several worms. <laughs> there are a few different bonus um, activations in there. There is the Remembering Your Future activation, which I'm going to talk a little bit about today. And there is your first exercise in there. We officially start October 13th. There's going to be four live calls at the outset. So October 13th, October 20th, October 27th, and November 3rd, those are Saturdays at 11.30 a.m., we're going to do our live support calls. There are going to be mindset exercises. There's going to be energy healing activations. There's going to be meditations. There's going to be journal prompts. There's going to be support for you in this group, including additional calls after those first four, up through December of 2018 for 197 bucks. It's, it's a really huge deal, and the reason I want to do this is why? Because I'm on a mission to normalize wealth and abundance for women. And I'm a little tired of hearing the same thing, because I, I did it too. I, I'm, not, I'm not casting judgment here. 
but I am a little bit tired of hearing constantly I can't afford that. There are women who I know who are really just dynamically like soulmate assigned to me to do the deeper work that I'm doing with Mother Creatrix work, um, with the work that I'm doing in Heal, Awaken, Align Bootcamp, who tell me I can't afford you. I can't afford that program. Well, let's, let's get rid of that. If that's the only problem, if that's the only barrier, let's deal with it. I'm a problem solver. I want to help you solve this problem. All right. Couple things right at the outset here. Couple things that I want to drive home because if you are not willing to do these things, everything I say here after this, I mean, you can just sign off the call if you're not willing to do these things and if you don't believe these things. Because everything I say after this, if you don't believe these things, won't, this won't do you a bit of good. And I'm sorry to take a hard line with this, but I will tell you this from experience, from my own work, doing mindset, doing energy healing around money, um, bringing in new manifesting tools and technologies to help me bring in more money. If you do not jibe with these three things I'm gonna tell you, don't even bother, don't even bother. Number one, do you believe, do you believe, heart and soul, body, mind, soul, that you are the creator of your reality? Do you believe that you are the creator of your reality? Because if that is true, you don't get to play the victim. If that is true, that you are the creator of your reality, you don't get to play the martyr. If that is true, that you are the creator of reality, you have no one to point the finger at at your money situation other than you. And if that is true, that you believe that you are the creator of your reality, then you understand you have created the situation that you are currently in, so radically accept it at this moment. And radically accept the fact that you can change it if that is your decision to do so. Give me some hearts, ladies, if you are on board with me. If you're not on board with that thing right now, just sign off. Because I don't want to waste your time. I get a yes. Give me some yeses. Let me know what's going on here. <laughs> All right. If you believe that you are the creator of your reality, then you believe that you have created where you are up until this point, And you have the ability to recreate your whole situation, as dysfunctional as it might be, your whole dynamic, your relationship with yourself and with money. You have the ability to do that. You want to know how I know? Because I friggin' did it. I did it. And I thought I was never going to make any money doing this. I never thought that I could quit my bartending job and do this full time and make money. And I never thought that I'd make the money that I'm making right now. Here's the second thing. Will you allow yourself to get crystal clear on what it is that you want? Do you believe that you can have such crystal clarity on what it is that you want? Do you have that now? What do you, what do you want? What do you really want? And do you feel that you are entitled to ask for that? Do you feel in your power enough to ask for what you want? Because I'll tell you what, if you don't ask for what you want, you'll never get what you want. What do you want? Third thing, are you willing to make a decision that you are going to make more money? Are you willing to make a decision have you decided that this is just going to be? It is going to be so. You're going to do this. You're going to make more money. You're going to do it. It's, it's going to happen. It's a foregone conclusion. Done. Already happened. The end. Period. Deciding. Unwaveringly. Do you decide that you are ready? Put your hand on your heart and say, I am the creator of my reality. And I decide to make more money. 
And take a deep breath in. And just sit with that. No more bullshit, no more excuses, no more hiding behind words, hiding behind stories, hiding behind past relationships, hiding behind old programs. We're done. We are way past this now, ladies, and we are way stronger than we think we are. Truth. Okay. And if you are not on board with these three things, love and sayonara, and I wish you peace. Because it's not that you won't come back to this, you will. You'll come back to it, you'll listen to it again, and maybe something will open up for you. No one else is responsible for your money story or your relationship with money. Accept this radically in this moment and don't be surprised how fast things will shift for you. Okay? You are the creator of your reality. So if you are fully accepting, radically accepting that you are the creator of your reality, let's get started. Make this decision now that this is gonna happen. So, let's manifest some money. I'm gonna walk you through what I did. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I like to do fun little things. Um, does anyone else keep getting booted out? Allison says she's getting booted out. My feed is up and running. I'm seeing it okay on my phone and on my desktop. Maybe your computer's feeling surly, Allison. Sorry about that. The reason I wanted to do this is because I like to do this fun little thing where I will say, I'm going to manifest $2,000 in 24 hours. Or, like I said uh, last night, actually it was yesterday afternoon, I want to manifest $5,000 in 48 hours. Now, that may sound like a big amount of money for some of you. Uh, it was for me at one point as well, but it's not right now. It's not. That's half of what I make in a month. And when I first started on this journey of making more money in my business, I was actually able to double my income inside of 14 days for the month. So my target was at that point, I think $4,500. And so I doubled it actually to 9,500 and I did it within 14 days. So I made more than my income goal for the month inside of two weeks. Pretty cool. So what do you want to do? What do you want to bring in? How much money do you want to bring in? Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. One of the things we often do with bringing in more money is we are operating on a certain level of self-delusion or self-deception. So um, if you are, let's just say, wanting to call in a large amount of money when your normal income is maybe just four times less than that, and that's a big chunk of money. So let's just say your normal monthly income is $4,000 a month. Let's just say that. And you wanna call in like 30 grand, <laughs> okay? I'm not saying it's impossible, by the way. But let's, let's look at maybe some of the self-deception around that. Um, how could this money come in? If you have a fixed income, um, we rule that out right away. If you have a fixed income, and even if you got a big bump in your raise or something, um, probably not gonna happen. An inheritance, sometimes we have an inheritance come in. That happens for people. Um, $30,000 worth, mm, maybe, maybe not. Uh, do you play the lottery? Lottery, it could come in through the lottery, who knows, who knows? I don't really advise playing the lottery because that puts all of the power of authority around your money story elsewhere. Um, but hey, it's fun once in a while. I gamble. I live in, in a gambling town. So I like to play poker and I like to play roulette, but I don't rely on it as an outcome for putting food on the table or um, getting the kids clothed, getting utilities paid and things like that. Um, how could this money come in? And we don't have to figure out the how, but we have to subtly walk this line between being in self-deception around calling in a massive amount of money that probably, yeah, if you're, especially if you were calling it in, let's just say 48 hours, 
uh, what's the likelihood of that happening? A lot of things have to ship, shift in our time-space continuum in order to bring that in. Because when we ask for something, it doesn't mean that it isn't already in the works. It is. Because making that declaration, knowing that you create your reality, the second you ask for something, the energetic is there. It's already created. So if you are saying, let's just say, I make $4,000 a month. What if I want to double it and make 8,000? And maybe you're not on a fixed income. Maybe you're like me, where you could offer a few more packages or services in your business, and that's possible for you, yes? Or, you know, maybe you have some investments, and so that could come in that way. Or maybe you have some clients with some past due invoices and you could kind of rattle their cages a little bit and say, hey, you know, it's time for you to pay me the accounts, whatever, 45 days past due. Hi, Yura. And that's possible for you. So for me, let me just put it, let me frame it. I'm going to use myself as the guinea pig a lot here today. When you think about how much money you want to call in, try to get out of self-deception as much as possible with it and say, you know what, I, I could do this. This is possible. Because if you feel... If you feel that you're asking for such a big amount, you might want it. You might very well want it. You might desire it greatly. But there's going to be that inner critic that's going to come in right away and say, good fucking luck. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So you're shooting yourself in the foot right then and there. But if you go into that energetic of, huh, you know, I make $4,000 a month and I got this new program coming out or... Um, let's just say you're on a fixed income and maybe you have some old accounts you need to go through or maybe there's some things you could sell. Maybe there's some, maybe you have a little side hustle on Etsy or something like that. Maybe you make jewelry. Maybe you have a little side business that you do and it's possible for you. Maybe there, maybe there was a rich, a rich, uh, wealthy relative that just, uh, died and maybe you might get some money from that, but just Get out of the self-deception because if you're going for something that is so big and so out there and set yourself up for failure, you're not going to want to do this work again because it'll feel really defeatist right out the gate. So be somewhat realistic with the money that you're choosing. So when I chose $5,000 in 48 hours, I knew that, okay, I have my one-on-one -on -one sessions. Those are 1500 sorry, 1600 no, 1500 each. I have my VIP days, which are $2,200 each. Um, I, did, I sold three of those within a week, two weeks ago. Um, I have my Heal Awake and Align Bootcamp, which I'm still going to have open for a little bit longer, and that's, 18, that's $1,897. I have women enrolling every day now in the Money Lab, so that's $197. I have lots of passive income streams, so I have online courses that I sell. Um, you know, past programs, past workshops that people can do on, on an online self-study basis. So realistically, when I think of all that stuff and I think about how many things that, that I could sell, if I really wanted to put the word out there, I could make seven or eight grand in 48 hours, really, if I'm honest. So when I think about it that way and I break it down that way, I'm like, five grand is nothing. It's nothing. It's half of what I make in a month. Why, why can't I make it in two days? Why not? Why not? I have the means to make it happen. So get out of the self-delusion a little bit and come up with an amount that feels good. And I invite you ladies, please feel safe in this space. I always, can, I always create a really blessed container for us to do this work. And it is a safe place to share. So if you feel aligned with doing so, go ahead and, and put your, your dollar amount in there. And share that with me. What do you, what do you think you want to call forth. And in what time period? Do you want to bring this in in 24 hours? Do you want to bring it in in 48 hours? Do you want to bring it in in two weeks? Do you want to bring it in by the end of this month? By the end of this year? I mean, really, whatever timeline you want to work with. But get out of that self-deception a little bit. So when you think of this money that you're calling in. Get really clear on what you want. When I think of, again, I'm gonna use myself as an example. When I think of calling in $5,000, I think of, okay, 
If I break that down, what am I gonna do with that $5,000? Well, I know exactly, because I have crystal clarity on exactly where that money is gonna go, what it's gonna provide for me, and the feeling that I'm searching for with that $5,000. So this is a really pivotal key. Key part of this is, if I'm calling in $5,000, why that amount? What's the feeling I'm searching for? Well, it gives me, it gives me the money to put some money away towards something I'm saving for next year. Um, it gives me an opportunity to purchase something now that is a, another big investment in helping me to take my business even further. And that feels really good. That feels really expansive because I'm in a really good place with my business right now. I'm moving and shaking. I got a lot of irons in the fire. Things are awesome. Things are really fun for me right now. So I feel super aligned with my business. So all of these things going on, it makes me feel like, okay, I know the feeling that I'm searching for because I'm already kind of in it. And when I think about what I want to get with this $5,000, I think of, okay, when that money comes in, how is that going to make me feel? What does that look like? What does that provide for me in terms of what am I going to be able to pay for? Um, can I get rid of a credit card? And, and you know, you maybe don't want to put it all towards stuff that feels like good girl stuff, I call it, meaning if you're calling in, let's just say you want $1,000 right now because you have to pay for a new refrigerator and you got to get some utilities paid and last month's utility for your gas is past due. So you're calling in this money because you need it and because it feels desperate. Let's not go there. Instead, why don't you go for, if you believe you're the creator of your reality, why don't you try to call in $2,000 so that you can get all of those things taken care of and then you got a little kickback on the side, you got a little something extra. <laughs> If this feels out of alignment for you, it's because we're not used to this. We have to get into this practice again of feeling like it's okay to call in more than we need without feeling we have to give it away. One of our biggest blocks as women, and I wish it wasn't the case for women because I work with men on mindset too around money, but they don't have the same kind of mindset hangups that women do, unfortunately. So when a man is making his money goal, and some men that I've worked with, they go really big. You know why? Because they're totally okay with having more than enough money. But for many of us, we've been in this constant survival mode with money that we think that I'm gonna call in just what I need. I just need to get by, I just need to get by. We're in this constant place of scraping by constantly that we feel like it's not okay to have extra because it's not our normal. Because that's how our subconscious is wired in terms of the patterning that we have around money. So if it's been your patterning around money to just scrape by, to just be in survival mode, to just barely get those utilities paid and rent paid every month, that's your normal. That's your baseline reality right there. So we have to get in the practice of being okay with calling in more than we need without feeling we have to sabotage or give it away. This was a big one for me, and I know it's a big one for some of you too. So think about that dollar amount that you're calling in. So Maria says 5,000 by the end of this month. Great. Are you really clear on what you wanna do with that? And is that $5,000 gonna to go towards some things that are fun? Because here's what happens if you're like the good girl and you're responsible with some of that money, but you get to play with some of it too. It feels good, it feels expansive, it feels like a reward, it feels like, this remembering that you are an abundant being and you get to play here. We're not just in survival mode, but we have been taught to be in survival mode, okay? There's a difference. And if you're just calling in money that's going to pay off things that are a necessity, on a subconscious level, it feels like punishment and you're less likely to call it in because it feels desperate. And when it's desperate, it's aligned with judgment. I never have enough. I'm barely scraping by. I am poor. There you are going into that duality again. So you're, when you are aligned at that level of the emotional spectrum, that low vibration end of the emotional spectrum, you are not very likely to call money in that's going to make you feel all those great things that money makes you feel when money does what it's supposed to do. It acts as this energetic tool as a means of exchange to help you get what makes you feel great.
a spa day, a fun day with the kids, taking them to Disney World, um, going out to dinner with your husband, date night with your husband, um, buying that new handbag that you want, going on that Sedona trip. All of those things are aligned with feeling really good. So if you're calling in something out of a place of desperation, how do you expect to get from here to there? It's not going to happen. So think of it this way. When you ask for something and you get really clear, and I'm talking about the things that I talked about at the beginning of this call, making a decision. I'm deciding. Yesterday, I decided that I'm going to make $5,000 in 48 hours. It's happening. It's done. In my mind, it's already there. In my mind, it's, it's, it's a done deal. It's a foregone conclusion, period, the end. It's just happening. It just has to. It must. No ifs, ands, buts, excuses. It must happen. It must be. I am creating this. Boom. So when you are in that space, what's happening when you make that declaration with every part of your being, with a forceful declaration, what you are doing is creating it right then and there. In the ethereal realm, it exists. And now what we have to do is shift into this place of removing the resistance, removing the blocks, removing the barriers to shift into alignment with it. So here's your declaration. You made this declaration. Here it is over here. You're sure it's going to happen. It's a done deal. It's a foregone conclusion. It just is. It's there. It's right there. All you have to do is get it, move into alignment with it. That's all you got to do. You must get rid of this duality of, it'll get a lot easier for you if you can do this. Get rid of the duality of, I want it. I don't, I'm not in it yet. I don't have it yet. It's not here. I'm still poor. I'm not wealthy. This duality is what is keeping you so far apart from what you are asking for. This constant judgment of what is. This constant judgment of what is in your reality right, right now and what has been in your reality up to this point. Reality is very malleable. Reality is entirely changeable and has the possibility to become so many different things in any given moment of consciousness, of any moment of conscious connection. So if you have this declaration, I am this, I am this person who's collecting $5,000, I'm just not there yet, well that's a bridge, you're still working with the duality by saying, it's there and I'm not there yet, you're still working with the duality, but it's, it's closer. So this is a good way. You can say, I am becoming this woman who easily calls in $5,000 in 48 hours. I am becoming that. Meaning, in your subconscious mind, you understand the premise of you are on a continuum. You are moving towards it. And every time you clear a belief that's keeping you in resistance to it, every time you clear a trapped emotion that's keeping you in resistance to it, you are just moving along on that continuum creating greater momentum until you are in alignment with it and can finally receive it. Then you just have to be in a place of allowing it, which is a whole other thing for many of us. So let go of as much of the duality of having, not having money as much as you can. So let go of the judgment. If you are in a very, uh, if you are in this place where you have a stout belief that this can be, that it already is, that it already is, that the second you made that declaration, it already exists, it's already out there. But we are here in 3D on this time-space continuum where things must shift in order for that alignment to happen. You doing the, the work, let's just say, of having radical self-acceptance of where you are and seeing how you're feeling about in this moment, because the second you make this declaration, that inner critic is going to kick in and tell you exactly all the reasons why you can't have this money. That's outlandish. It doesn't work that way. You can't just call it in. Um, who do you know that's ever manifested that much money before? No one in your family, none of your friends. Who the hell do you think you are? Um, how are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? We always want to know the how, right? We can't surrender the outcome. We have the hardest time surrendering the outcome. Literally, 
putting this declaration out to the universe and we stop trusting right then and there. Yes, we have to do the work to shift everything so that the one, one of the resistances that we have is that we are on this time-space continuum here. And we have this perception of time. So there are things shifting, realigning, so that this can happen. And so here you are over here doing your work of clearing your limiting beliefs, clearing your patterns, your programs, your trapped emotions. Here's this thing. You're getting closer all the time. Getting closer all the time. Closer all the time. But it has to be bound in the place of, I am becoming this. You need the framework and the structure of, I am already that which I seek to become. The more you can get rid of this duality and the judgment of, I'm not there yet, I'm not there yet, I don't see it, I don't see it, because we always want to see everything. We always want to have proof, right? We want to have stout belief only through seeing, feeling, tasting, touching, experience something through our five senses, senses or is it, it isn't real, right? When actuality is the other way around, we must have stout belief. We must trust. We must surrender. We must have complete and total unwavering faith that it is. It is. And our process is just removing all of the resistance so that we can allow it to be. Does that make sense? You guys with me? Did I put you guys to sleep? Hi, Tanya. And here's the thing that we really have to nuance with that. So constantly being in this place of this, this framework and this structure of the singularity of it. I'm in it. I'm in the bubble. If you listen to Abraham Hicks, they, they call it the, um, the vortex of creation. So you're already in the vortex of creation. You're creating it. You are that which you are becoming. I am that I am. That's your powerful I am presence, declarative presence that allows you to create your reality. If you're already in this space, you are op occupying or embodying, I should say, a singular field of consciousness, the unified field, meaning that you are one with everything that you have already called forth on a physical plane, and you are already one with everything that in your time-space continuum, <laughs> or you're in, in your um, rational 3D mind, has not happened yet. But in the unified, unified field of consciousness, you are one with everything that you ask for, that you desire, that you are actively creating. It's already there. You are just doing your job to align with that energetic, that vibration, meaning you're clearing all the low vibrations that do not align with that of what you are creating. We're constantly in this place of especially with money. It's such a highly charged topic. I need this. I have to have it. This desperation. We have to have this kind of detached feeling around, I'm going to create $5,000 in 48 hours. And won't it be wonderful? Instead, going in this place of, well, I asked for it, and I did it with all parts of my being. I'm creating this. I have created it, and now I'm doing everything to continue on that momentum, that continuum, so that I align with it completely and call it in. I'm occupying that singular field of consciousness by saying, it's already there, it already exists, and I am already everything that I need to be in order to be in alignment with it, but I need to tidy up the stuff that's part of my 3D mind, that is part of my subconscious mind, that is part of the programming and the patterns. Maybe there is, and I'm going to talk about this in more depth in a second, a lesson that I haven't learned yet around money, around having money, that will bring me into better alignment with calling this in as well. So when you think about it that way, I think, think about it like this. We have to stand in this place of abundance, okay? Literally act as if. Act as if it's already there. So when we make this declaration, what we're doing every day is surrendering completely in full faith, standing in stout belief that it already is. It already is. I'm just waiting things out on this time-space continuum to be able to call it in. Hi, Pamela. 
It's already created. So I have to stand in my place of abundance until it is done. Done meaning I have fully called it in on the physical 3D plane. It's already mine. I already created it. And one way we can go into this place of what I call remembering your future, it's a really great tool for putting you in that place energetically where you've already received it. You're living as if. This has already come to pass. You've already called it in. And visualizing is great, but at the core of visualizing something, it's about the feeling. The real way we communicate and telegraph our desires to the universe is through feeling, essence. So when I think about that $5,000 that I call in in 48 hours, or when Maria thinks about that $5,000 she's calling in by the end of the month, what is that feeling you are searching for by having this desire? What's the end result? What does that feel like when you've called it in? If you're living as if, it's easy to occupy the energetic. It really is. If you have more than enough money, meaning you can say yes to things, if you have more than enough money so that your bills are paid and you stop stressing, you stop worrying, you start, stop living with that low-grade anxiety all the time that we have about money, and you could just be, you could just relax, you could take a day off. You could maybe take your kids out to dinner and have a nice time with the family. You could maybe treat a good friend of yours who has maybe treated you to lunch several times at work and you just didn't have the money to get them something. How would that make you feel to buy that person lunch who's been really gracious to you? To be able to do that and not have to worry about the money. Go into that energetic. Remember your future. Think about all the different situations that can happen. Let it kind of snowball. Don't just think about one thing. Like once you get in that energetic, and that's why it's so important to get into the feeling space of it, it starts expanding instantly, especially when we're talking about higher vibrations and, and a good feeling. We start thinking of all these different visualizations that allow that feeling to funnel into all the different things we can do. When I think about making $5,000 in 48 hours, I just think of like, Oh my God, my sister's coming tomorrow. This is, she really is coming tomorrow to visit. I'm thinking of all the great things that we can do, all the great stuff that um, we get to take advantage of here in Tahoe this time of year because all the tourists are gone, but we can still do lots of fun stuff. Um, maybe we can go up on the gondola, which is really kind of expensive, but I don't have to worry about it because I've made the money and I'm still paying all my bills and I'm still being responsible with my money because one of my lessons that I need to learn is to be more responsible with money and to not feel like because I, I love treating people I love to be gracious with my money but sometimes I've done it to my detriment where I've given away too much so when I do this little process of remembering my future what I'm going into is this place of I've already learned this lesson of being responsible with my money so it's telegraphing this message to the universe saying this is in my highest good for you to send me this because I know the lesson I need to learn here and I'm going to mark it downloaded and completed right now by going into this place in the future, what we call the future, but it already already exists. Um, we're going into this energetic of remembering our future and I'm in this place, this visualization and this feeling of I get to spend money on me and the people I love because all my bills are already taken care of and I'm set for next month. I learned that lesson and so when I have my visual and go into that feeling space of what calling in that $5,000 in 48 hours feels like, I'm downloading into that memory in the future of all the lessons I need to learn. So that tells the universe, okay, it is in my highest good to bring this in because I get the lesson. It's downloaded and complete. Thank you very much. Learned. <laughs> Learned and done. So make the decision that it's just going to happen. It has to, but not in a place, this is an important distinction, of worrying it into being. Because a lot of times we've uh, convinced ourselves on a subconscious level that if we worry about something enough, that we have this, if we have this low-grade anxiety enough about something that we're calling in, it somehow magically, poof, makes it appear. Never. Never. <laughs> it never works that way. So instead of worrying it into being, 
have this energetic that it's just a done deal. It's just there. It's just there and everything I'm doing every day with my mindset, with my energetic, my sustained resonance of abundance that I'm in, I'm doing everything that I need to do on my end to move further along on this time-space continuum, making it happen, and getting in alignment so I can fully call it in. Surrender to the certainty of it and let go of the how. Have some grace with this. Let go of the desperation and the judgment of how it's going to happen, of all the reasons why you can't call it in because you've never done it before. You are here now. You are not here before. We are often so entrenched in the past and lamenting what has been that we bring it into the now and we allow this energetic to pollute our now. Our now is pristine. Our now is pure. Our now is untainted. Unless you, because you are the creator of your reality, bring in something to taint or pollute or intoxicate that. Let that wash over you. The now moment is the pure moment of creation. Creation can only exist in the now moment. We create our future in the now. The now is pure. The now is pristine. The now is perfect. It is unblemished, untainted. It is a beautiful blank canvas. The only thing that starts that, that momentum of creation is your energetic through your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs, your stories, your programs. There is no one coming in with colored pencils or markers drawing on your canvas. Take full responsibility for your power to create and your power to create at will. And the more you align with the now moment and let go of everything that has been, let go of the judgment and the desperation, let go of the worrying of the future, that low grade anxiety of what's gonna happen next, what's gonna happen next, that was my parents for their whole lives. Worrying about every little thing, not realizing that it changes nothing, except pollutes and intoxicates your ability to enjoy the now and to be a full creator in the now. Does this make sense? Are you hearing me? <laughs> Give me some hearts. So get clear on what you want. Have that dollar amount in mind. Give yourself that time capsule in which that you can create it or you are creating it. Let go of the, the desperation, the judgment around it. I am becoming this. I am becoming this. This is happening. That space of faith, foregone conclusion. This just is. It is becoming. I am becoming. It is happening. Let go of the guilt, the shame, the buried emotions around it. Because the second you come in and have this desire, if again, you are polluting your now moment with what has been, what will come in is guilt. I'm not allowed to make this much money. Shame. I do a whole talk about shaming around money and women. You should listen to it. If you want me to tag you, or maybe I'll add it here in this post. Shame around, many women hold shame around I can't make my bills. I can't meet my financial responsibilities. It is shameful for many of us. And so we are polluting our now, our ability to create in this perfect, pristine, unblemished moment. We are voluntarily polluting it by bringing in all this guilt and shame from what has been. It is your choice to do that or not. These things are going to come into your awareness, but you don't have to keep them there. Remember, the now is pristine, the now is unblemished. Whatever you decide to create in the now going forward is entirely up to you because you are the creator of your reality. Okay, Lamorla, I will. Think about the fact that when you want something and you don't have it, it's because you're not in alignment somehow, okay? I wanna, you're gonna hear me repeat things a lot because like I said, we are out of practice. We have been taught out of 
thinking about these things and knowing the truth of these things on a deep soul level. Um, we've allowed the subconscious and the patterns that have taken over to dictate what is real. So you'll, you'll hear me saying things over and over again, but that is how we learn because this repetition will allow it to create some new neural pathways in your brain that will allow for new connections of how you think about your life, how you think about money, how you frame yourself, how you frame your worldview, all of these things. So that's why I'm saying things over and over again, okay? Okay, Kathy, I will, absolutely. I'll find it right after this and I'll put it in the comments. So when you think about what it is you want and you don't have it, again, going into that duality, stay away from that. It's toxic, toxic, toxic stuff. It's only because the alignment hasn't happened yet. You haven't called it in yet. There is resistance. There is resistance. Thoughts that come into your awareness right away when you start thinking about what it is you want are your trail of breadcrumbs, I like to call it, for the things that you need to clear. Think of what you want, these buried feelings that come up, the shame, the guilt, right? Um, maybe some of us have felt like our identity is being a financial burden to our family, our husband, our kids. Who are we without that identity? There's things that's gonna, that are going to come up around this stuff. But again, like I mentioned at the beginning of the call, you have to have radical self-acceptance. You can't sweep this stuff under the rug. If there are things that come into your awareness, as soon as you put this dedicated, stout belief of, I'm going to make this money in such and such, such amount of time, automatically that inner critic does kick in, the inner judge kicks in. What is the inner judge saying? because it's telling you exactly the resistance that you're holding on to and what you need to clear. There's your trail of breadcrumbs right there. Those associated trapped emotions that come up around that, there's another trail of breadcrumbs right there. You need to heal that, you need to release that. EFT tapping, I do EFT tapping every day. I do it a little bit different than it's taught. I'm gonna share this with you in the Money Lab um, because I use affirmations as well as doing healing and clearing and I connect with the mother creatrix, which is the creative matrix. There's no difference. So this is a game changer for me with doing EFT tapping and healing and releasing. And yes, I'm making the money that I wanna make, but guess what? I keep asking for more money. So every time I'm doing that, you peel away more layers of resistance because otherwise this money would just easily come in. And I know that it, because if it's not coming in very easily to me, that there is some resistance there. I need to radically accept that there is resistance and then do my best to sleuth that out and get rid of it, to heal that, to upgrade my energetic from that healing and release so that I can, again, move along my continuum and get into alignment, okay? Where are you not forgiving yourself? This is a huge thing. Many times accompanied with the shame and the guilt we have about stories, maybe not being able to um, pay a, a debt that we owe that's like a whopper, let's just say. I, and that, that's me, my student loans. I'm whittling away at those. And it's a massive debt. But I forgive myself for having it. I forgive myself for not being the best custodian of that debt and paying it on time or paying it in a reasonable way. Yes, I'm operating on this idea that someone's just going to come and rescue me and pay the whole thing off. It's a nice fantasy of mine. I admit to having it. It's probably never going to happen. But I have learned that lesson of being more responsible with my money. So it's easy to forgive myself, number one, to let that go. But then I can mark that lesson downloaded and complete because I'm taking a different set of actions now. I've adopted a different set of behaviors that says to me and says to the universe very clearly, it's safe and right and okay to send me more money because I've learned this lesson about not being responsible with my money and now I know how to create new behaviors that are in alignment with me being more responsible with money. Does that make sense? When you see these limiting feelings coming up, these limiting emotions, these trapped emotions, 
Maybe you're remembering right here and now, money memories, money stories. Write them down and make a note to yourself. I did ask you to, to bring a, a notebook and a pen. Write down what comes up, everything that comes up. When you're asking for this amount of money, let your inner critic, your inner judge have a field day. And write down all the resistance you're feeling right now because that's your trail of breadcrumbs to show you exactly what resistance you are holding onto and what needs to be cleared and released. You'll notice when you write these things down that there's a pattern, that there is a greater story there. Because our whole uh, subconscious framework, especially around money, is about patterning. We have programs around it, sometimes programs and patterning that we learn from a very early age, usually around six, seven, eight years old. From our family, our peers, grandparents, um, our friends growing up, and our friends' families. Um, things we learned in school, things our teachers taught us. The patterning goes very deep. It creates neural networks of behaviors, thoughts, feelings, okay? It goes pretty deep. So unless you are willing to radically self, you know, accept that these things are there, ruminating somewhere around inside yourself, and are in need of excavation, until you address that, you will be really far out of alignment with what you're calling in. Get out of self-delusion. This is another way we have to get out of self-delusion. We often think like, okay, I, just, I have this awareness now. That's not enough to just have the awareness. You have to clear it. <laughs> you have to reconcile yourself with it. You have to forgive it. You have to forgive yourself. Forgive the other people involved. Forgive the situation. Forgive yourself at that moment in time. Look at the patterns that are there. Because if there's a pattern, that is indicative of a lesson that you need to learn still. And when there's a lesson for us to learn about money, the universe will honor the fact that you came here as a free will being, as an infinite being, but chose a human incarnation and has free will choice, that you chose to learn certain lessons, to have emotional experiences here. It doesn't mean that we have to keep living them out, however. It means that we need to download the lesson and mark it complete so that we can move on to a heightened level of experience, a higher quality of life. Because when we came here and incarnated here, we knew it was gonna be like this. So look at the patterning that comes up with all the things that you're writing down. What's the story there? Is there a pattern that shows you that there's a lesson that maybe you haven't learned, like I needed to learn, I'm not very responsible with money, or I wasn't very responsible with money. It just literally slipped through my fingers. And it was also another thing I needed to learn from that and decided to learn from that. I made the decision to download this lesson and mark it complete so the universe didn't keep having to send me situations where I had to learn this lesson over and over again. I needed to respect money more, to have more respect for it, to love money a little bit more. Because there were things that I was holding on to in my energetic that made me feel guilty about having too much money, which is what I mentioned before, like having more than enough money never sat well with me. And so I would get rid of it as quickly as I could. And it's because there's a part of me that really didn't love money. I wasn't in love with money. Now, please don't think that that's some sort of um, energy of me like worshiping at the feet of money. That's not it. Loving money in the sense that it is an energetic tool, a means of exchange that allows me to live a higher quality of life. Why wouldn't I love that? I love that. It's great. You should love it too. <laughs> I would like you to love it too. I don't like to use the word should. So what lessons, what mark, what lessons can you then mark downloaded and complete? And when you go into that place of remembering your future, and by the way, that remembering your future um, energetic, let's see if I can find it. Remembering your future is a talk that I did where I walk you through what happens in terms of using this as a manifesting tool. And it's already in the money lab, this alignment with Mother Creatrix, and then going into a guided meditation and energy healing of remembering your future. 
So I do a talk about it here and I'll just share it in the comments. Oh, and I wanted to say that the, um, I misspoke. The shaming about money is an activation, or it's part of an activation that is already in the money lab. So it's accessible in there. So when you make this decision of what you want, let's backtrack a little bit. Stay open and relaxed with it. Get out of that duality of, I want this, I don't have it yet. That means that I'm wealthy, but I'm not wealthy right now, I'm poor. Get out of the duality of that. Instead, create this bridge, this passageway of understanding that allows you go in, to go into the singularity of, it's already there, it already exists, I'm just moving into alignment with it, I'm becoming it. Stay open and relaxed with it. Get out of the desperation, the judgment. I am becoming this. This is happening. Go into that place of faith, of surrender. We don't get to know how it's going to happen. We don't. We can put certain things into play that make it easier to happen, but we need to detach from the outcome that it's going to happen that way. This is how we stay open and relaxed with it. And the remembering your future activation that's already in the money lab helps you to stay open and relaxed because it allows you to go into that energetic of, it's already there. What I'm asking for, it already exists. So that allows us to just kind of relax into the truth of that. If we know how things manifest in the ethereal first, in the world of essence, and then come inward into more dense energies and create into form. If we understand that that energetic is already out there in the ethers, it already exists, we can kind of relax into it a little bit. Like, okay, all right, this is good. I like the way that feels. It's already there, it's already out there. So now what do I need to do to get in alignment with it? Are you allowing then yourself to receive it? That's a whole other thing, right? And I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but make the decision, make the decision that it's going to happen. Again, I say this over and over again, make the decision. It's going to happen. It just is. It's already out there. If I create my own reality, I choose this. And you can make this declaration to yourself throughout the day if it helps you to kind of bridge this gap or close the gap on having the faith and the trust and the surrender of this. We're really capable of quantum leaps at this point. But one of our biggest barriers is our inability to fully trust that that is true, to fully believe it. If I could tell you more of the examples right now, this is a whole other live, of things that I've been creating and manifesting lately, it's kind of shocking to me. And I'm trying not to go into the shock of it. I'm trying instead because that connotes duality, being that shock of, but it's always been this. How could it be this? That's duality personified. And so I don't want to go into that feeling. I just want to go in that feeling of relaxation of, this is my natural state. This is my natural state of being where I create and I allow. I create, I allow. My desire is my compass for which direction I'm going in. My desire is that fertile seed of a creation that blossoms with the full faith and stout belief that it just is. Let's see what Allison says. I can't read that. Ah, oh, hell, I just had the revelation. My personal income went down. The money started going to replacing the nice things because we had because kids broke it and replaced with crap because kids break it. Ah, that's, that is a big revelation. That is a big revelation. Write that down. That's a great journaling prompt for you, Allison. Like I said, there's going to be stuff coming up in here as I keep talking that are coming up for you too, that are very personal and unique to your situation around money. Write it down. Don't assume that you, because you have this revelation and this aha moment here, that you're going to remember it after this call. You probably won't. <laughs> Your, your mind and, and, um, and your energy is going to be kind of all over the place after this call, but in a good way, but you may not remember that. So write it down. That's why I wanted you to have pen and paper here. Get super clear on where your money goes. Get super clear on when you bring in money right now, 
This is another, another little tip for you. Where does your money go? Are you responsible with it? What are your spending habits? What are your spending patterns? This is another way we get out of self-delusion about what we're calling in and we can create some clarity about maybe a lesson we're ready to learn. Maybe a lesson the universe has been trying to teach us over and over again, but we're just like, yeah, whatever. I'm gonna keep doing the same stuff over and over again. It's not working for me, but hell, it's all I've known. I'll just keep doing it. And I don't mean to be glib. I'm not making fun of you. I am not um, poking at you for sport. I'm doing this because, I'm talking about this because we all talk about this. This is all very relatable. You know, some of us have really shitty behaviors around money. It's time we fess up to it. It's time to get out of the self-delusion around it. If we really wanna call in money, how responsible are we with it? How much do we love it? How much do we respect it as the incredible tool for a means of exchange that it is? How much do we show it love? Do we, when we get money, do we like crumple it in our wallet and like throw it in the bottom of our purse? Um, think about how you treat money. All these things matter. They do. And that's why I wanted to do an ongoing money lab instead of just four weeks. I wanted to keep this rolling through the end of the year because there's so many things to unravel and deconstruct around money. And our dysfunctional relationship with money is composed of many, many different things that we often don't think about until we have a talk like this and we give it some framework and we, we really kind of give it some levity and we can see like how much of an energetic this is really holding for us in our lives. What are your spending habits and your patterns around money? Are you good with it? Do you wait to pay bills until the very last minute? Why do you do that? That's a lack mindset, that scarcity mindset right there. Feeling like you wanna hold on to money until the, the, the absolute last minute. Or how much are you in self delusion around, um, I'm gonna go have fun with this money. Uh, you know, I need to pay the gas bill, but whatever, it'll come in next week. Will it? Are you doing, the mindset work to make sure, like we're talking about right here, like getting in the space of it will come in, it's going to happen. Are there things in place maybe that you can bring that money in? Are you, or are you in total self delusion and like, eh, I don't have to be responsible with it, I'll worry about that later. Think about these patterns and these programs so that when you do the Remember Your Future, and if you're gonna be joining the Money Lab, you'll wanna do the Remember Your Future manifesting tool often because you get to go in that space of acting as if, living as if, feeling as if this has already come in, and you get to add this little bonus thing of, hey universe, look at me, I learned this lesson. When I go into this energetic in my future of already calling this in, I'm already being a good girl with my money. I'm already doing these things. I'm already being responsible. I'm already behaving in a new way that has better spending habits. I'm already showing money that I love it a little bit more. This is important stuff. If you don't think it is, well, think about maybe where you are with your money story right now, okay? I want to tell you, I've looked at a lot of this stuff, and it all matters. All right. Um, also, if you're afraid of numbers, this is another thing I want to mention. Um, a lot of us who are healers, we have this fear of numbers, meaning we don't like to look at our bank accounts. So if one of your patterns is, and maybe one of the lessons you need to learn is, you kind of turn a blind eye to how much money you owe, how much money comes in and out every month. Are you doing that? Because if you are, then you have a fear of numbers. You don't like to look at what is. If you are trying to flee from money, what kind of energetic alignment is that? It's certainly not one that allows you to call in more money. You get what I'm saying here? Again, we go through a lot of this stuff in the Money Lab. We do this on a very specific, um, well, we look at it really, really deeply when we do the one-on-one -on -one work together, if you wanted to work with me in that way. Okay. Think about what you're calling in. Think of that dollar amount. Start thinking about what the inner critic is saying about all the reasons why you can't bring it in. What's the judgment there? What is the limiting beliefs, the limiting feelings? the trapped emotions that you have. Follow that trail of breadcrumbs and then clear it. Do forgiveness work, do EFT tapping, do belief work. If you do Theta Healing, um, Vienna Stiebel's Theta Healing and you do belief work, do some of that. If you're already in Abundance Lab, you have the means to do belief work. 
clear this stuff, okay? Think about then what you're calling in. How is this in your highest good? How is this in your highest good to call it in? How can you learn certain lessons? Again, this is something you will figure out as you look at the patterning around your beliefs and what your inner critic says about why you can't call this in. Um, think about your patterns and programs around spending money. What are some potential lessons that you need to learn in order to be able to call in more money successfully, consistently, every time? How can you learn certain lessons from this going forward? Like for instance, being more responsible, careful with money, save more of it instead of spending more of it on maybe some frivolous things. So when you do your remembering your future, in a sense of being in this vibration of seeing yourself being responsible, seeing yourself being uh, loving money a little bit more, more careful with money, um, looking at your bank account. If you're one of those people that has the fear of numbers and you just don't want to look at, at the amount of money going out versus coming in. And this is something that can honestly, and I'll tell you this from having doing these re rewrite your money story sessions with women, they don't want to look at their bank accounts. They just don't realize that it can be a subtle tweak between money going out and money coming in that allows them to completely change their money story. And I'm not a business manager. I'm not an accountant or anything like that. But to me, it's just like, well, do you look at your bank account? Do you look at how much money is coming in any, every month versus how much money you're spending? Well, let's fix that. <laughs> and so for me, it seems like common sense. But if we are having this baseline irrational fear of money and the power of money and the power it holds over us, which is totally false, by the way, because money works for us. All energy here in this dimensional range of 3D works for us. That includes money, not the other way around. So when we have this fear of numbers, fear of looking at our bank account, it's totally irrational. And it's something that needs to be cleared and released because it's very toxic, okay? So being in the vibration of seeing yourself in the future, being really responsible with money, allowing you to have the awareness right now of where you sabotage yourself with calling in your money, sustaining the frequency of living in that moment then. So let's just say you are doing this process of remembering your future, going into remembering your future, going into that feeling of what it feels like to live as if this is already done. You've already called it in. It's done. It happened. What does that feel like? And then sustaining that frequency as long as you can. Sustaining that vibration. And especially with thinking about taking it even further, thinking about that lesson that you're downloading. Because here I am, universe, being more responsible with money. You can even have a vision of yourself putting money in your bank account, looking at your bank account, and feeling good about the money that's in your bank account. Maybe you have a vision and a feeling of setting up an IRA, setting up another savings account, maybe setting up what I just did and it felt amazing to have just a separate business account just for business expenses, money going in and out. Um, for an accounting perspective, this is really huge for me and very organized and I'm just super proud of myself for doing it. And it also, because I'm taking this new behavior showing the universe, showing myself, showing my subconscious that I'm being much more responsible with money, that it sets this whole new tone going forward. It creates a whole new energetic going forward that moves me into a place of more allowing. Go into the feeling often of remember, this is another one of the things I want to really hammer into you. Get out of the duality of Okay, I'm calling this in, but where is it? I don't see it yet. It's not here. I'm still poor. Get out of that duality. It is killing you. You are energetically shooting yourself in the foot. Go into the essence of, I am creating this. I am becoming this. I am not there yet is a great way to say it, but even better, I am becoming this, which means energetically, subconsciously, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you are on this continuum of aligning with it. Yes, I did the last year business account. Isn't that huge, Patrice? It makes a huge difference, right? It's already there, what you're calling forth. It already exists. So just shifting some stuff around in your energy in, in this time-space continuum of 3D to make it happen. 
So get out of self-delusion and, and <laughs> stop watching that movie, The Secret, and thinking that all you have to do is just lay back and just like, oh, I want this thing, so it's just going to manifest. I'll just be here picking daisies until it shows up. It doesn't work that way. I wish that I could blow unicorn rainbow smoke up your poop chute, but I'm not going to do that for you because I love you too much and I respect you too much. And for all my sisters who are on this journey of really legitimately wanting to step up to have the support financially that they need to be more, to do more, to have more, which is all part of our abundant blueprint. It's all part of our soul's blueprint as infinite beings having a human experience. We are meant to be here and be abundant. This is our soul's divine course to continue on a path of abundance. The only thing that is stopping that up is us and our own resistance. I wish that I could just put something out to the universe and say, yeah, okay, well, I'll just be here drinking wine until it shows up. And be really leery of coaches that tell you that. Because there are a lot more universal laws than law of attraction. Some of them, in a way, we're talking about them here without calling them out as, as certain universal laws, but there are a lot more laws that create the mechanisms, the workings of the universe, than just the law of attraction. And the law of attraction is largely misunderstood. So we're talking about much more than that here. So here are some things to think about. So I want to wrap this up. I want to begin to wrap this up because we've been talking for almost an hour and a half. So here are some things to think about in terms of, of blocks, about bringing in more money. I wanted to give you some examples. How good are you at managing your money? This is one of the things you want to look at. Look at the patterns around that. Is there a lesson you need to learn here? Um, are you responsible with money? Are you blowing it on frivolous things? Are you paying bills too late or not at all because you're like, la, 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 they don't exist. So you're not radically self-accepting your situation and dealing with what is. Rather, you are fleeing from what is, okay? Are you afraid of numbers? Looking at your bank account, you know, looking at money going in versus money going out. Um, because <laughs> handling your finances is huge. The universe wants to send you what is in your highest good based on what lessons you have learned where you are on your journey of, of, you know, of, of spiritual evolution, but physical, mental, emotional evolution as well. One of the ways that we get to showcase this or understand it is through our money and the way we interact with money. So if you're not handling your finances very well and you're fleeing from the reality of your situation as often as you possibly can, this is self-delusion. So the universe is not going to keep sending you something that keeps you in self-delusion because that is not in your highest good. Does that make sense? So what lesson can you download based on these things that I'm asking you to look at, okay? Because if you wanna call in more money consistently and allow money to flow in easily and regularly, you have to get out of any self-deception, self-delusion that you have around this because on a subconscious level, it's, it's a block. It is resistance and a way that you may sabotage yourself if you feel like, for instance, this is way too much money for me. It's way too much money for you because you've been kind of, you know, skating the edge of survival mode with your money for so long because you've been fleeing from your money story and fleeing from your responsibilities and your, your financial responsibilities especially. So what message, think about what message that sends to the universe, your co-creator in this endeavor of bringing in more money. It's not going to send you something that isn't in your highest good. So clean up this toxic shit. <laughs> clean up this stuff. That's what I'm helping you do in the money lab, okay? I'm sorry to yell. I get passionate about this stuff because it's so important. It's so important. And when you understand some of this stuff, it really becomes easier. It may be that you have to listen to this stuff a few times. It may be that you're gonna be looking at some painful things that you have not been accepting about yourself. It may be um, this place where you're gonna to have to bring up some old stories and memories that are not too pretty to look at or be in the energetic of. 
But if you have made this decision, you are deciding that you want to be more, do more, have more, and the means for that coming in is calling in more money, this is what goes with the territory. Sorry, not sorry. And I want you to see all this stuff because I really have just mad love and respect for every single one of you here live, every single one of you that's going to be watching this replay, every single one of you that gets even one little tiny little sand nugget of wisdom from this. It goes somewhere. It ripples outward. It will eventually be this, this, piece, this lump of coal that becomes a freaking diamond. It will, I promise you. You may not be in a place right now to even hear all of this on the level you need to hear it. That's okay. Come back to it. Please come back to it. Because I needed to hear this stuff several times before it really sank in. Look in the at the trends in your life around money, going in and out. Be willing to do this. An unwillingness to look at your money is like fleeing from the now. If you don't radically accept where you are, you are starting this work with a tainted mindset and energetic, with a tainted now. Remember how I talked about the now is perfect, the now is pristine, the now is unblemished, except when you voluntarily bring shit in and just kind of dump it into the now of what has been. What has been does not mean it has to still be. That has to be your decision, however. That is your free will choice. But you have the ability and the free will choice to work from the now as a beautiful unblemished canvas where you get to paint your masterpiece. That is your free will decision to do so. And you have to be able to say to everything that I've said here, I am ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for this journey. I'm ready to step up. I know the universe is calling me up to do greater things. It's time. It's just time. It's just time. It's time for me to do this stuff. It's time for me to really look at my resistance. It's time to create a whole new story. It's time to create a whole new identity around money. Get yourself ready for it to come. So if you do all of these things, bring all of these things in, follow this um, advice or this template that I'm providing for you here. Put your hand on your heart and say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And the universe is going to start showing you some things. But it's all out of love. It is all out of love. It may feel like punishment, but it never is. Because when you say, I'm ready, it's the same energetic of saying to the universe, all right, show me what needs to happen. Bring it. Bring it on. I'm freaking ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm done with this old way of being. I've been there, done that a million times before. I see exactly where it gets me with just a big fat donut hole, nothing. I'm done with that. For real. Done this time. Done this time. And I mean it. <laughs> so when you say I'm ready to the universe, that is the cue to bring you exactly what you're asking for, which is to see the resistance to become aware of the trapped emotions, to become aware of the limiting beliefs, the old stories you keep telling yourself, to see the gaping holes in and the hollowness of an identity that maybe you've built for yourself around a false idea and illusion around money. Get yourself ready for it to come also. When you say, I'm ready, this is also energetically priming the space so that you may allow yourself to receive it. Welcome it in. Act as if. Find ways in your life, and this is something I help you do in the Money Lab as well, find ways in your life to bring yourself into the energetic of, I am welcoming this money in, like an old friend that you knew once before, but it was a different relationship back then, but you're a different person now. And you're ready to greet this old friend with open arms. Please forgive me if it sounds cheesy, but this is the energetic we're going for here. We gotta love money a little bit. We gotta want it a little bit. We gotta see ourselves as being on this equal playing ground instead of, um, or maybe even higher than that, than having money hold all the power or wield something over you. It does not work that way. That's all illusion. That's all ego illusion and subconscious bullshit. 
energy here in this dimensional plane, in this playing ground, serves us, not the other way around. Say that to yourself. Let it be your mantra. Say it over and over and over again until it goes where it needs to go. Act as if it's coming because this is part of allowing. So maybe you want to declutter because we're talking about emotionally and spiritually decluttering here in terms of releasing old beliefs and patterns and stories and programs. But you can physically declutter as well. So let's just say one of the things that you want to call in with this money that you're calling in is maybe a new couch. Figure out where in the living room it's going to go. Maybe polish up those wood floors where the couch is going to go so it's all nice and sparkly and ready to welcome this new couch in. Get rid of your old one. Because that also says something to the universe like this is going to happen. It's happening. It's a done deal. It just is. It must happen. Or get rid of some old clothes. Donate some things that make you feel part of this like identity of I am poor. Which creates the energetic void then, the space of being able to bring in new pieces of clothing of your new wardrobe. Allow it to come in. Act as if. And we go more in depth with this in the money lab of giving, giving this abundance a place to go. And we have a lot of allowing issues. Many of us have a lot of worthiness issues about our value of calling something in. This is something we also go into um, in the Money Lab. So we're going to break down everything that I've talked about here today. We're going to break it down into even more depth in the Money Lab. And we have a lot of, well, we're going, depending on how much you interact, I'm encouraging a lot of interaction here because the more you put your, put your stuff out on Front Street, <laughs> and put it out in the open without shame, without guilt. Like, this is me, this is what I do. What happens over and over again is there are at least one, two, three, or four more women who are like, that's me too. And we all have an opportunity to support and uplift each other through this process of being really open and honest about where we are with our money store because the stuff that we really don't wanna put out there and we really don't wanna talk about, guess what that is? That's the stuff that really needs to be cleared and healed. That's probably your bottom belief that you're holding. And until you get to that nugget, all the other stuff is just academic. Are there any questions? So be in that space, be in that space of it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. And then have that awareness of, look at this piece of abundance. This is, this is a trail of breadcrumb of, uh, or breadcrumb trail that I'm seeing of the abundance filtering in. Sometimes it begins with a trickle. But if we don't have the awareness of it and we don't notice it and have the gratitude and appreciation for it, we are opting for a different energetic that says to the universe like, yeah, that's good and whatever, but that's not really what I want. It is what you want. It's the beginnings of something greater. It's the trickle before the deluge. So I, I hope that this has um, been enlightening for you. And for those of you, some of you who are watching are already in the Money Lab, but if you choose to, if you're watching this from a business page and you wanna share this, please do. Um, I would encourage that. I wanna get a lot of women in this course who feel really aligned with this work here. And for the investment of $197, it is going to be well, worth the amount of content and the value that I'm going to share with you and the support. And if you want to do this on a deeper level, so if you've been making a little bit of money and you kind of hit a wall in your business, and I specifically like to work with women who are spiritual healers, have a spiritual business with this, uh, these money blocks, they're called Rewrite Your Money Story and it's a 90 minute session and we go a lot deeper into this work on a one on one, -on -one level. And then you have exercises to take away with you afterwards. So ladies, thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here live. It has been really, really a pleasure to share this information with you. I hope that you go out and do great things with it. And, uh, and come back and check in with how much you manifested. And by the way, I put out this declaration of creating $5,000 in 48 hours. I already called in 2000. So it is happening. It's done. It's a done deal. It's just going to happen. It's just The rest of it is just going to come. I don't know how it's going to come. I don't need to be attached to how it's going to come. But it's coming. 
All right, ladies, have a beautiful, beautiful night, and I want to wish you so much love and peace. Bye.